Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to inject a bit of dissonance and weirdness and chaos into your playing. And I think particularly these days in YouTube and social media land, everyone seems to be such an amazing player and it's all so tasteful and everyone's got great tone and great technique and perfect intonation and uh, dare I say that it all sometimes gets a little bit boring. So in this video I'm just going to be talking about some of my favourite ways to introduce a bit of dissonance and tension to your playing and it's something that I like doing a lot, it's something a lot of my favourite players do and really I suppose it's you know, the essence of what music is about. It's about tension and release, consonance and dissonance and uh, you can't have one without the other. So in this video I'm going to make no attempt to be comprehensive. These are just a few ideas that I like to use. If any of you have got any further suggestions or strategies for achieving these kind of sounds then uh, do let me know in the comments. So that was a little solo in which I attempted to cram a few of the ideas that I'm going to be talking about today. And I suppose with this kind of thing it's very easy just to make some silly noises and to play some wrong notes and then think, hey, I'm weird and you know, think you're some kind of avant-garde guitar genius. But uh, really I think this kind of thing is best when it's done for a reason and it's done with a little bit of artfulness. You know, otherwise it can just be um, a little bit annoying and uh, you know, maybe some of you thought the solo I just played was annoying, uh, in which case uh, you probably don't need to watch any further. And clearly context is everything and there are some situations where this kind of playing can be really effective and you can really go all out with it. And then in other situations, just a sprinkling, just a hint of this kind of dissonance can be really effective. And uh, you know, obviously if someone comes to you with a, a beautiful acoustic ballad and then you go all out with some kind of avant-garde noise solo, that, that kind of thing might not go down so well. And I suppose that on one level it's good not to overthink this stuff and it's better just to play with some spontaneity and confidence and attitude. I think those are the most important things when playing in this kind of a style. But having said that, I have got a 20 minute video to fill up. So I'm going to try and go into a few more specifics than that. I'm going to be talking about things like chromaticism, unison bends, use of open strings, wide intervals. Uh, I might touch on playing outside like you might hear a, a jazz player do. I'll talk about using effects. So uh, let's get into a few of those things now. Let's get started. Now I was just playing over a one chord thing in B minor. It was just a one chord kind of vamp or groove. And I was just exploring some ways to bring a bit of tension and interest to that chord progression. It's not even a chord progression, it's just a single chord. Now in that context, in any musical context, there are going to be notes which will sound stable and settled and then other notes are going to bring a, a greater or lesser degree of tension. So if you're playing over a B minor chord, then you're fairly obviously the note B, the root note, is going to sound very stable and settled. You're likewise with the other notes in the chord, I think. So you've got the fifth, which is an F sharp, and you've got the the minor third, which is a D, all of those notes in the chord built into the backing track. So if you're playing those notes in uh, in your solo, in your rhythm parts, I mean, today I'm largely talking about soloing, but a lot of the ideas I'm speaking about today, uh, you can apply to rhythm guitar ideas as well. But all of those notes in the chord are going to sound pretty stable. And then you can kind of extend that. Um, you could play the B minor pentatonic scale, the B Dorian mode, the B natural minor 
scale again all of the notes in those scales there'll, there'll be a, a bit more tension in some of those notes because they won't be in the chord but they're you know all going to sound fairly stable and settled um, and then you've got the the notes outside of that so you've got sort of 12 12 musical notes to, to choose from you've got the, the the five notes in the pentatonic scale seven notes in the the natural minor scale or the dorian mode what about the other notes and those are the ones that are going to have the most dissonance or tension and I'm deliberately not going to say that these other notes are wrong notes I'm not really someone who believes in the idea of wrong notes you've got all of these notes which you can choose from they're just choices which are going to give a certain emotional effect they're going to make you feel a certain way and often it's going to be the case that you'll play a, a more unusual note and then you want to resolve it so you kind of go outside and then come back inside again but not always sometimes you might just want to stay on that tense note and that in itself is a is a particular kind of musical statement and in my solo I did in fact play quite a lot of just straightforward B minor pentatonic a bit of B Dorian mode as well and I think that's important you've got to have that as a kind of stable place and it's against that that you can play this dissonant stuff and then you're going to have a nice contrast. It wouldn't be nearly as effective if I just kind of launched into a whole load of kind of avant-garde dissonant stuff and I didn't contrast it with the with the other stuff, then uh, it wouldn't really mean anything. One simple device you can use to introduce a bit of tension is just to go for some of those in-between notes by adding some little bends in there. And this is probably something you do already if you're a blues player. It's a very common thing to do you could just take a straightforward minor pentatonic scale and just you try tweaking some of those notes a little bit sharp and uh, you, here you don't really want to go up to the next note it's not even a, a semitone bend it's you know, it's a quarter tone bend you're just going for those kind of in between sounds and i suppose the classic thing to do in a blues context is to take the minor third and just you know, gesture up towards the major third but you don't quite get there but really can do that with any of the notes in the pentatonic scale Just give it these little bends. You can do little pre-bends as well. And it just adds a little bit of movement to things, a little bit of gentle dissonance, which I think can be really effective. Another device that's really easy to use is chromaticism. And you can think about that as just filling in some of the extra notes. So if you've got a B minor scale or a B minor pentatonic scale, just fill in some of those gaps with some chromatic passing notes. So if we just take our B minor pentatonic scale here in the seventh position, and you can think about those pentatonic notes as being your, your stable notes. And then in between, you can kind of fill in the gaps with some chromatic notes. So just on the top string here, we've got a D, and the B, those notes are in the scale. Got the, the D flat and the C there as well. You can use those you know, to get from the D to the B. And then you can just fill in the notes elsewhere in the scale as well. So then you end up with And uh, you know, it doesn't sound too weird that because you've got that stable pentatonic framework if you just throw in a few of those passing notes it just adds a little bit of uh, gentle dissonance another thing i love doing is using dissonant sounding intervals and that was what i did right at the start of my little solo uh, I suppose that you can classify intervals according to their consonants or dissonance. And I think the so-called perfect intervals, the perfect octave, perfect fifth, for example, have a very stable consonant sound. So you've got the sound of an octave or a, a fifth, which is just a, a power chord, just, just sound, sounds very stable and at rest. And then you've got more dissonant intervals. Uh, I suppose my favourites are major seconds and minor seconds, which have a very dissonant sound. So, And uh, on the guitar, I, I like to play them on pairs of strings. So if we're on the top two strings, if I have a B, a B on top at the seventh fret, if I play the eleventh fret on the second string, You've got that lovely dissonant minor second interval. Those notes are just a semitone apart, so they're really you know, rubbing up against one another and fighting. And then if I bring the note on the 11th fret down to the 10th fret, you've got a major second sound, which is slightly less dissonant, but it's still got that nice kind of rub to it. 
and uh, th those are the interval shapes on the top two strings and then it's the same thing on the G and the D minor second major second the same thing on the D and the A and the A and the low E but on the B and the G then the shapes are going to be one fret closer together so that's going to be the minor second and that's going to be the major second uh, you can kind of, kind of play those at random if you like but what I quite like to do is just to find those major and minor seconds as they exist within the pentatonic scale and the blues scale then there is some kind of logic to the note choice so if you, if you picture your, your pentatonic scale I could play this shape or this that's got the, the flat 5 in there so that's kind of from the blues scale could come down here major second so all of those double stops got a great kind of dissonant sound you could you know, further tweak those with some bending or using the, the vibrato arm a little bit and then usually of course you'd want to resolve those tensions and then you can just play you know, play a blues lick play something straightforwardly B minor pentatonic and it would resolve nicely something I love to do is play unison bends uh, I'm sure I'm guilty of overusing this device actually and the basic idea is this it's this kind of a sound so it's a double stop in this example I'm fretting this F sharp note at the seventh fret on the B string and then I'm playing the ninth fret on the G string and I'm bending this ninth fret note this F sharp up to an F sharp until both of the notes match that's why it's called a, a unison bend and uh, what's great about this is you know, as the bend is on the way up you're getting all these dissonances and the notes are fighting against one another and you can hear that kind of a uh, beating sound And usually I'm going to be playing these unison bends on the higher strings on the guitar and remember if you're playing on the top two strings then the notes are going to be one fret further apart to, to compensate for the tuning and the notes are one fret apart on the B and G and uh, you could play them on other string pairs as well but it's a li little bit of a stretch it's not, not quite so natural under the fingers for me and then in context a good starting point would be just to play unison bends from the key so here we're talking about B minor I could just play unison bends using notes from the B minor pentatonic scale for example so and I could throw in that the flat five for the blues scale There are loads of ways to think about accessing these dissonant notes of finding those so-called wrong notes and we've already touched on uh, chromaticism but um, there are loads of other things you could try and you know, jazz players are very fond of this kind of outside playing as it's called and it's beyond the scope of this video to explore this stuff in too much depth I could uh, go into it a bit more in, in future videos if you would like but I'll just give you a few thoughts now and quite a common thing to do would be to just play a scale but go up one fret or go down one fret from where it should be so here we're playing B minor if you're playing a B minor pentatonic scale what if you played a C minor pentatonic scale so take everything up one fret and that's going to give you a really dissonant sound because you know, all of the notes are going to be one fret up from the the so-called good sounding notes and that can be a very striking sound so I've just got a B minor in my looper pedal here if I put that on and then play a C minor pentatonic take a listen to how that sounds so uh, you're pr pretty horrible sounding you, you, you're probably thinking and, and yeah it can be but obviously that is only going to be effective in contrast with the more inside sounding stuff so if you were to combine that perhaps with some B minor pentatonic stuff then that could be quite an interesting sound so you know, maybe I could try you've got a sort of conventional pentatonic sequence what if I kind of played that but went back and forth between the C minor pentatonic and the B minor pentatonic that might sound a bit like this So 
it still sounds sounds pretty weird, but quite quite an interesting sound. It, it doesn't quite sound like just playing random notes. There is some kind of logic to what's going on. Now, really, there's nothing keeping you playing any scale over a B minor chord, but I suppose some scales are going to be more effective than others. Again, quite a common jazz thing to do would be to play some of the symmetrical scales, so things like the diminished scale, and that's actually quite a good fit over a minor chord. So over a B minor chord, I could play a B diminished scale, and it's got that kind of weirdness to it, but it's also got a slight bluesiness to it as well. So the, the symmetrical diminished scale, you can just think about that as being a series of whole and half steps. So if you start from, from a B, you can go whole, half, um, and so on, uh, all the way up the scale. And uh, against the B loop, that scale would sound like this. So it's an option, it's not going to work in every single context, up to you to decide whether you like that kind of sound or not. I mean, the, the danger, of course, is you do get into that kind of noodly jazz fusion kind of a, a land which uh, you may or may not like. It's not particularly my kind of thing, but it's certainly an interesting kind of sound. And uh, you know, if, if your ear is kind of interested in that kind of thing, there's a lot more to explore. There's all kinds of you know, interesting things going on within the diminished scale and you know, triads and different chord sounds you can play around with. Another common thing done by jazz players to get these kind of outside sounds is to superimpose other chords or other chord progressions onto the chord you're actually playing on at any given moment. So over this B minor chord, for example, we could just be thinking about another chord or another chord progression entirely. And uh, a common one is just to think in terms of the five chord, and that actually gives you a, a sound which is not too out there because the five chord is quite closely related to this B minor chord. So, so the five chord in relation to the B minor, the, the five is the, the F sharp, you can play an F sharp seven, and we could be thinking about playing F sharp seven over this B minor chord. We could just play an F sharp seven arpeggio, Anything that would work over that F7 sound. So again, you could think diminished scales, or perhaps you could think the altered scale to give you a very kind of jazz sound. So that kind of sound. So that's the F sharp altered scale, which is the same as the G melodic minor scale. So uh, over the B minor loop, that would sound like this. A pretty dissonant sound that you, you may like that you may not like it but it's, it's quite a, you know, a powerful thing to play around with and you could really take that approach to extremes and imagine that you're playing over some completely different chord progression or tune whilst just sitting on that static B minor chord. I enjoy using wide intervals and angular kind of sounds and patterns and I don't know if this is exactly dissonance but it's certainly a way of introducing tension and a bit of unpredictability to your playing. And if I demonstrate this once again with the, the minor pentatonic scale, it, it just means instead of just playing up and down from one note to the next in the scale, you can just introduce some wider skips. So perhaps you could play in, in fourths. So, so often you're going from the, the same fret from one string to the next. So it's just coming down the scale in fourths as opposed to just going down like that it's, it suddenly sounds a little bit more angular and you can introduce wider intervals and uh, the easiest way to do that on the guitar is to introduce some string skips so, so that's just kind of pentatonic sequence but I'm skipping a string each time you can go for you know, double string skips and get 
really kind of wild and angular sounds. I like throwing in open strings as well, and that, that gives you access to, to wide and unpredictable intervals. So if I'm playing a B minor pentatonic up here, or if I just occasionally threw in some open strings. So Just going to briefly talk about effects and pedals. Uh, obviously that's a nice way of introducing some chaos and some weird noises. It's very easy to do, particularly these days. There are so many great and really inventive pedals around. You can get all kinds of crazy noises. Um, in a way it's almost too easy just to stomp on a pedal and get some mad noises and for that reason it's something I tend to shy away from a little bit and uh, I prefer to get these sort of dissonant sounds from my fingers and from, from ideas rather than from effects. But it is something that I occasionally do. It's something I did in my little demonstration solo. And there I was just using a, a pitch shifter pedal. I've got a Digitech whammy pedal down here, just set to a fixed interval. And then that just uh, provides a harmony. If it's set at a fixed interval, it doesn't take account of the key. And you know, sometimes that fixed interval is gonna sound consonant. At other times it's gonna sound um, weirdly dissonant. So here I've got the whammy pedal set to give me a minor third above the note that I'm playing. So and then you can just play pentatonic stuff and it's going to have that extra harmony on it. So and uh, this is inspired by John McGeeck. There's a great McGeeck solo that he plays on the magazine track Permafrost, where I think he's got this kind of harmonizer sound towards the end of the solo, and he's playing this great kind of lazy bending lick. So the great thing about this is you can just play your standard pentatonic material, but it's got this extra layer of, of weirdness, and all you need to do is just play it with a bit of conviction, just you know, good, good rhythm, and uh, you're gonna come up with some, some interesting phrases. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. Lots of other things I could potentially have spoken about today, but maybe I'll save some of those things for another video. If you would like to play along to my backing track, you can find that up on my Patreon page. I think it's actually a really good idea just to play along to a single chord loop when you're trying to get some of these ideas into your playing. And uh, also going to tab out my little improvisation at the start of this video and probably some of the other ideas and licks that I've discussed today. So all of that stuff can be found on the Patreon page. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you next time.